Hey guys, welcome back to Will's Garage. Thanks for joining again. Got another brake job for you. This time on a 2003-ish, I don't know, uh, Volkswagen Jetta. Super easy front brake job. So front brakes, uh, first thing, jack up the car. I'm on a lift, real easy. Next step, take off the wheel. You need the wheel off to get to the brakes. Um, this one, the uh, brake wear sensor is illuminated on the dash. Not all these Volkswagens have wear sensors. Uh, and generally, it's usually on one side. This one has the wire for the brake pad indicator right there. Uh, and a trick I've showed you guys in the past, um, I like to try to retract the caliber before I change the pads. Uh, it makes getting the caliber off easier and saves a little time trying to uh, compress the caliber once it's unbolted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take like a little pry bar in between the caliber and the rotor and I'm going to pry it. What it's going to do is it's going to push in the piston. Um, once I get it in a little bit, I'm going to go on the opposite side. I'm going to try to push it in the rest of the way. And then I'm going to take off, uh, so in the Volkswagen they use these little dust caps. So there's a bolt on the top, bolt on the bottom. These are Allen uh, socket bolts. Uh, I don't remember the exact size off the top of my head. I want to say they're six millimeter, uh, but you're going to loosen those up and you're going to hit the caliber off. And then this is something you don't see, at least if you're not doing the brake job for the first time, a lot of people leave these bolts out. Um, but I'm gonna take off the bolt, the retaining bolt for the rotor. So we'll take that off, get the rotor off, and clean up the hub and start putting things back together. So stay tuned. Seven millimeter, seven millimeter Allen socket. Fits into those bolts there. Now let's take off the caliber now that I retracted it. All right, guys, here's the brake pad with the wear indicator. And as you can see, right here is a loop of wire. And what happens is as the rotor wears into the pad, it cuts this wire. Once this wire is broken, see there? The light goes on. Once this wire is broken, when the light goes on on the dash to let you know that the pads are getting low. You generally have a few thousand more miles to go before you hyperextend the pad and or uh, start grinding metal to metal. But like I like to say, uh, I always replace the rotors with the pads. The rotors aren't very expensive. As a matter of fact, I got these uh, rotors, pads, uh, a whole brake kit from FCP Euro. I think it was $120 for the whole set. So that beats any of the local auto parts stores. Brand new pads, brand new rotors, uh, it's the best way to go. So, um, you know, do some shopping around, make sure you get a quality pad and stuff, but replace the rotors. Don't bother trying to cut them, and definitely don't try putting new pads on an old rotor. Uh, I'm not sure here, but I'm sure once I get the rotor off, I'll show you guys the back side, and we'll see that it's probably full of rust now. All right guys, here's the rotor. Look, you can see the backside. See the rust scale build up, even on the outer lip. So the surface here is not terrible, but the outer lip is what's uh, built up with rust. And this is what cut the wear sensor. This is why I say, you know, this will cut the sensor before the pads are actually very low. So you'll have a few thousand more miles to go before, it's definitely grinding metal to metal. And if you look here, I know it might be hard to show on the camera, but you can see this side is thicker than that side. It should be uniform thickness. So you can tell this has definitely been wearing a little more on the outboard 
side of the rotor than the inboard side. And then not to mention all the vents here, all loaded with rust. Once these things get clogged, the rotor doesn't cool properly and then you get warpage. It's another reason why for only a little bit more money, it's a good idea to replace the whole rotor and the pads at the same time. This new rotor, um, I got these from FCP Euro. Uh, they're pretty close to where I live. Um, it's cool to see that they actually came with a new uh, rotor mounting bolt, so it holds it to the hub. Uh, a lot of times the original is a Phillips head, gets stripped out, gets stuck, breaks. Um, so it's kind of cool to see that this came with a new one. Uh, these rotors are actually painted. There's no wax coating on them. So you don't have to worry about cleaning this off with brake clean. Uh, just try not to get it too dirty. Um, when you put this screw in, I like to put some anti seize on here so that next time you do the brake job, you can get this bolt off easily. So again, make sure the, the hub surface is clean. Make sure your caliper slides are clean. Uh, I'm gonna actually put some lubricant on these now so that I can get all the surfaces and not get the lubricant on the rotor. And the kit I got from SCP also came with this tube of plastic lube. Uh, I've never used this stuff before, so we're going to give it a whirl. Uh, it says on here, clean the pad, guide, tracks, and the brake caliber, and the bracket, then coat with this plastic lube. Um, so I'm going to put some here. I'm going to put some on where the pads go against the caliber. Uh, I imagine what it's going to do is it's going to try to keep the, pal the, the pad from making any kind of squeals and squeak noises. So uh, let's go ahead and move this up. I got the bolt in for the rotor mount. This bolt does not need to be very tight. It's really just kind of holding the rotor against the hub. Once the wheel goes on, it's going to sink everything together nice and tight. So, just need to snug it up. It doesn't need to be over tightened. Once that's on, caliper's clean. We can start loading our pads into our caliper. And button this job up. So there is an inboard and an outboard pad on this car. Um, on this one, the tabs are a little different. This one's a light silver, this one's painted black. The driver's side pad on here is the one that gets the wear sensor. You can see the amount of material in here before you even hit that wear sensor. So this is gonna go inside on the piston side of the caliber. I'm gonna load that in first. And then the outboard pad slides down from the top. Forget to put the dust caps back on. And finally, the wear sensor wire. You got any grease on the rotor? A little brake clean. Clean it up. So that's pretty much it. Front brake job on a 2003 to 2006-ish uh, Jetta. Uh, same procedure applies for many other vehicles. Um, and definitely for the other side of the car. It's pretty much exactly the same. Same procedure, we're gonna loosen the caliber, get the pads, uh, pads off so we don't have to worry about pushing the piston in later. Change the rotor, clean everything up, new pads, new rotor, and you'll be done with it. Keep in mind though, new pads, new rotor, Go easy on the brakes for a little while because you want this uh, pad to seep into these rotors. Uh, you know, it's going to wear off the coating here, it's going to wear 
the peg into the rotor. So you'll have some decreased braking performance for a little while until everything seats in. So I hope you like this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave me a comment below. Let me know if there's any other videos you'd like to see. Um, you know, I've said in the past, most of the cars that I do is just whatever comes to the shop. Uh, lately though, I've been doing a lot of brake jobs for whatever reason. Um, so I figured I'd kind of give you guys a, a well-rounded brake job procedures. Uh, but again, you know, most brake jobs are pretty much the same. You do one, you can figure out any of them. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.